Ladies and gentlemen, Jean DiNapoli. Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome to Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli. We're going to call these January shows the Elvis Connection because it's Elvis's birthday month. Welcome to episode number 20. I can't believe we have 20 episodes already dealing with actors and singers and all my friends. It is January the 18th. Hope everybody's doing well. Before we get started, we have a couple of special announcements. Tonight, we're going to dedicate tonight's show to a gentleman who was so influential in my life, if only for a short time. Tonight, we celebrate the heavenly birthday of my father-in-law, Jerry Gennaro, uh, the father of my beautiful wife, Paulette. So we want to dedicate the show to him. We had a couple of losses as... Early as yesterday, the great Phil Spector passed away. Whatever you think of Phil Spector in his personal life, you cannot deny that he was one of the greatest producers and writers of all time. Also, a gentleman I met many times who kept the doo-wop music alive with his group called The Crest, Mr. Tommy Mara, has gained his wings. So we want to wish Tommy a very beautiful uh, ride into rock and roll heaven. Thank you. My nice shirt. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Last week, I did a show on Facebook to raise money for a charity that last year named me the 2020 Man of the Year Award. We did a show last year with the hopes of raising $1,000. This year, we uh, we raised $5,700 for them. It's called Visions, and they provide services to the blind and the visually impaired. We decided to do another one this past weekend. And we exceeded the goal, thanks to all of our viewers out there in social media land. want to thank everybody for donating. And you can go to their website and continue to donate at visionsvcb.org. And while you're there, they also have a wonderful cookbook that they are selling. It's called Cooking Blind and Sighted. This is for people that are visually impaired. It's available in Braille or PDF. And you can download it to the computer. And my wife and I put a cheesecake uh, recipe in this book called the Galelli Family Cheesecake Recipe. It was a recipe my wife's family has done over 100 years. So go to visionsvcb.org, make a donation under my name, and also buy this wonderful book. Uh, Our sponsor this week, let's put our sponsor up. Uh, is San Martino Restaurant in Yonkers, New York. For the best of old world Italian traditional cooking for the past 46 years, visit San Martino at 12 Young Avenue, Yonkers, New York. You could call them up for outgoing orders at 914-779-5300 and also visit them on the web at sanmartinos.com. That's with an S at the end. And we want to thank Al and his lovely wife, Teresa, and everybody that's associated with that wonderful restaurant that we've been a restaurant. We've been associated with them for 12 years. We play there once a month and every New Year's. They are family to us. So we want to thank them. Oh, uh, Frank Sulo, Randy Salas, of a founding member of a band called uh, L.A. Tierra passed. We're very sorry for that. Very sorry for all our passings and and everything. So, um, you know, this Elvis month has really been fabulous. Uh, You could see all the shows on Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli, or you could go to our YouTube channel, Gene DiNapoli, hit the subscribe button and see everything. So the first week we did it, we did a, we had Billy Stanley, who was Elvis Presley's stepbrother. And he was phenomenal. And then last week, we had the director of Elvis Presley's 1968 TV show. Now, I don't call it a comeback because Elvis never went away. But he did 
TakeOver TV, and he made a resurgence. And I said I want to get into the movies. And I couldn't think of anybody better than to bring on to talk about Elvis and his movie career. Now, we're going to spend a few minutes with this young lady because she has had a stellar career uh, before Elvis and after Elvis. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about her book. We're going to talk about all things Cynthia Pepper. So, ladies and gentlemen, please bring our guest in for tonight, the very lovely co-star of Elvis's movie called Kissing Cousins, Miss Cynthia Pepper. Come on in, Cynthia. Thank you, Gene, so much. That's very sweet. Well, I only speak the truth, Cynthia. Um, as an Italian boy from the Bronx, New York, if I lie, it would backfire on me. Um, hey, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, you were so gracious, and we've been talking about this for a little bit already, uh, to right. agree to do this. And I know you're in you're in L.A. and you're in uh, California, and it's a little no, bit I'm of a in Vegas. You're in Vegas. That's right. Uh, you're so sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, I know you're a couple hours behind, and we're probably uh, biting into okay. your shopping time. But uh, we're so glad that you could do this. Um, and the reason I do this, Cynthia, is to get people to know you as a person and for your career other than Elvis. So why don't you take us back uh, to when it started for you. Uh, your father was an entertainer named Jack Pepper. Right. Uh, and he uh, he started off entertaining young and he kept doing it when he married his first wife, uh, Ginger Rogers. Right. Well, daddy was in uh, vaudeville. Your and father was in vaudeville. Yeah, he was always, he knew all the old guys, you know, Milton Burrow, Bob Hope, you know, Bing Crosby and all those. And then um, when he was quite young, obviously, he had a, a radio show in Chicago and he um, had met Ginger and her, I think it was her mother. And anyway, or her aunt. Anyway, he uh, ended up marrying Ginger. And he was married to Ginger Rogers for two years. And um, she was a, a champion Charleston dancer, 17 years old, in Texas. And my daddy's from Texas. That's why I say daddy. It kind of stays with me. And uh, so he married her. And uh, strange thing, I have two letters from Ginger uh, that she wrote to my aunt in Milwaukee, 1928. And it said, paraphrasing, he, we're on our way to Hollywood. We hope we make it in Hollywood, big and all that. And, and we knew what, ha you know, what happened with her. She just really made it big. Um, my daddy had a slight drinking problem. And I think that kind of kept him behind, you know, down a little bit. But, uh, he knew lots of people and he was friends with lots of people. So show business. And then he married my mom. My mom was a dancer with Ziegfeld and he liked dancers, I guess. Her name was Dawn. And, um, he, um, uh, married her, and then I have a, I had a sister and myself, and that's the family. So, so your dad, so your mom was a Ziegfeld Folly dancer. Yes, uh huh. She was in the Follies, and she was with Billy Rose and the Schuberts, and uh, uh, he. I guess he liked dancers, he liked very pretty women too, because and then she was under contract to 20th Century Fox, like I was actually, but she she didn't want that business. She. Uh, when she married my dad, she became, I would call a civilian. You know, I think there's right. young people and civilians. And she, she was the one that came that had a steady hand. She was the one that had a regular, you know, regular job and that kind of a thing. Right. And, um, uh, they were married, oh gosh, into the 40 years till he passed away, 79, uh, 1979. And then she passed away, uh, for Alzheimer's about uh, eight, Go no, about ten years ago. So wow. uh, my sister passed. So yeah, it was just it was just us. And, right. Uh, right. Right. So it was, it was. I would say that was in my blood. And I started. We lived in New York uh, when I was four, and uh, in the hotel, the Windsor Hotel. Do you know the Windsor? Yes, of course. In Central Park South. And anyway, nineteen nineteen forty five, forty six, forty four, and I happened to be in in. Um, a play called It's a, uh, it's a Gift with uh, Julie Harris. 
I was four years old. It was uh, her debut. She was 18, and I, I played her younger sister. She, it was a, a, a story about family, and I was the youngest. So I started when I was four years old in New York. Who knew? And then uh, my sister didn't want to have anything to do with, with business, so uh, that's what I did all my whole life. And uh, went back to L.A. I was born in Hollywood. Then went back to L.A. And we lived in Dallas for a while. My dad had a club, nightclub. And then uh, we went back home to uh, L.A. Right, right. So, yeah. So uh, I, I went to regular school. But I, I, you know, studied dancing and singing and acting and all that outside of school. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, two questions. Yeah. Number one, did you ever get to meet Ginger after her and your father divorced? Yes, I did. I met her. I did a, a show called Margie. It was on ABC, yes. and it was nineteen, yeah, sixty one and sixty two. The reruns ran in sixty two. Anyway, I I was doing the pilot and at Twentieth Century Fox, and I was under contract. And I went. I was in the um, uh, the wardrobe department, and there was Ginger Rogers in the wardrobe department because she was doing a pilot also. And I said, Oh my, this is really silly. I said, Oh my God, it's Ginger Rogers. <laughs> so I went over there and you know, when you're excited and you're nervous, you might say the wrong thing and you wish you could take it back. Well, this is one of those times I said, Miss Rogers. And she says, yes. And I said, my name is Cynthia Pepper. I believe you know my father. <laughs> of course she knew my father. She was very to him. And she was so gracious. She said, I just never forgot this. She says, Oh, she put her arm around me. She says, Oh honey, um, how is it dear old boy? And I said, he's fine. And we went to lunch a number of times in the commissary. And uh, that was when I had seen her and met her. I didn't, you know, continue any, you know, relationship. But uh, I certainly wish I had. Right. And uh, uh, Did your mom ever speak about her? Did who? My mom? Yeah. No, no, nothing. You mean good or bad or otherwise? Yeah. No, no, uh-uh. No, my my dad was actually married. Also, after he married Ginger, he married someone for a very short time who wasn't in the business, and then he married my mom. And uh, my dad, mm, he liked the ladies, and uh, I like to say the ponies. You know, the <laughs> horse racing. And he was he was quite a character. If you see uh, guys and dolls, you know, uh, Stubby K. Yeah, nicely nice. That that my dad could have played that. That was the kind of guy he hung out with. He hung out with Joe Frisco and all these guys, Milton Berle, and all all these guys. And he could have been, but he liked the ladies. So, no, she never, she, you know, by then they had been married for, I mean, she, it, it didn't bother her. Because right. my mother was a very pretty lady and she was uh, very sweet and uh, she didn't have anything to worry about. And right. Ginger went on to marry three or four more people. Yes, yes, but, of course. Uh, let me ask you, being that you came from a show business dad, did he encourage you to um, become a performer? Sure. Yeah, I mean, that's all I ever knew. I never, I've never done anything as far as the business goes in my life, as far as, you know, working in an office. I already made my career. I was very fortunate in, in show business and uh, acting. And um, so, no, I, it just it was something that I always wanted to do. I never wanted to do anything else. I started at four, then I went back to L.A., went to junior high, and I went to Hollywood High. I went to school with some people that became famous, you know, in my grade and a couple uh, years younger and older. And... Uh, but I, outside of school, I taught, you know, I went to classes for dancing and recitals and all that thing and acting. And oh, and then uh, when I graduated, he, uh, he introduced me to his agent and uh, he took me on. And that's how I, you know, I was fortunate enough that he had a, a good agent. And because my dad still did shows, you know, he did things, um, maybe not big parts or anything. He was always with Bob Hope and his special. Because Bob always, Mr. Hope always had his old cronies with him to help him out financially and so forth. Right. And no, so that's all I have ever done. My mo they both encouraged me, and that's what I wanted to do. But you did take uh, uh, regular classes, like uh, to become a typist, and took night classes as well. Oh, in school, yeah, in high school, I took typing, and that's I. I was really good in drama, chorus, typing. And PE, that's about it. I I like history and geography, but I don't like math. I flunked it in high school, took it again, and took got to be. I mean, just one of those things. It's just the business part is not in me. Same got with you. my dad. Right. And my son is kind of like me. And um, and that's all we've ever done. I did actually, well, I did actually have a little part-time job when I was uh, out, right out of high school. 
in uh, Hollywood. I worked in a printing shop because my dad knew someone who had a printing shop. And I like to work the machines. I like to do that. But he, one time he said, I want you to get up front, you know, and, and help people. To, he, they sold film at the time for your camera. And I did. And I made the biggest mistake of, of giving the, the customer back too much money. <laughs> because I, I was so bad at it. And I think that was the last time day I worked. Oh, boy. And then I, I mean, I've done other things. I worked in a flower shop. Part, you know, just for fun and part time as an adult and, right. and so forth, but but nothing, you know, in an office. I just have no, I have no head for that. Got gotcha. you, really. Got gotcha. you. Well, we we thank God that you didn't have a head for the office because you did so <laughs> many wonderful things. Now, now, Cynthia, you're not on video with us, uh, so you're on the phone, so you don't know exactly what we're doing. But right now, we got a right. picture of you. We have a picture of you up with pigtails and a and a sailor cap. It looks like. Uh, that says Angel of something. Uh, do you know the picture I'm speaking about? A sailor cap? Uh, no, maybe it's a nun's habit. It says Angel of something. I don't know. You know, you might have different pictures than I have. I know I, I wore kind of a sailor outfit in Margie, it looked like it, because the 1920s took place in the 20s. Um but uh, I did a flying nun with Sally Field, but I didn't wasn't a nun. Right. No, this could be Margie. This could be Margie. So probably uh, Margie. Yeah. Let's. Before we skip to that, when you were eighteen, uh, you appeared on Divorce Court. I, I, I appear, appeared on Divorce Court and at a day in court. And I actually, I actually danced in the King and I at the uh, Long Beach Civic Light Opera with Marty Nixon, who. You know, I don't know if you know who she is or was. She's the one that sang for Deborah Carr and King and I, now yes. in West Side Story, and and um, Audrey Hepburn and My Fair Lady. She was she was a Deborah Carr part. So I did do that, and uh, so I kind of danced, but I really wasn't that good. I'm more of a performer, you know, like a, not great in all any of it, but just having a good time and, and entertaining right. people. Um, so um, I did do, that was the first time I'd ever been on camera was the divorce court and day in court. I played the daughter of someone who was getting, two people who were getting a divorce. Wow. Um, wow. That, I, 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 I kind of always played younger. Right. Because when I did Margie and my, and my three sons, I played a high school and I was already 20. Was wow. Old. Right. Yeah. It's called Angel of Mercy is what the cap says. Oh, I know what you mean. That's Margie. I played, it was, it was a, it was a dream switch sequence. Oh, okay. And, was, and it's a twenties. Yeah. I had a, it did look like a nun's didn't it? it was white and a guy is lying down, laying down in front of me. No, it's just your face. And oh, well, I, I, it's I like I'm tending to this wounded soldier. Yeah. Uh, I, I, know, I know the picture you mean. That's Margie, honey. Right. Right. That That's great. Uh, let's talk about Margie for a little, even though we're jumping okay. the gun a little bit, uh, you wound up doing, uh, a long a tenure on Margie. You did what, two seasons? Well, uh, you know, before that, I did My Three Sons. Right. I did uh, 11 episodes on that. I was a semi regular and uh, a couple of stories of that if you wanted to talk about that or. Absol absolutely. Or, yeah, that was before Margie. That was that was a, a thing when I had just gotten married. In those days, you didn't really talk about being married. I was 19 when I got married, so this is when I was 20. I read for the part just once and I got it. And I played the high school girl, the, the love interest of Tim Considine, who was Mike. Right. There was Mike, Robbie, and, and, uh, and, and uh, oh my God, Chip. And so we lived next door in the, in the show. And so, but uh, worked with Fred McMurray. And the one I really adored was uh, um, um, William Frawley. We used to, he knew my dad. So he, he, we had a special bond and we'd go across the street. We worked at Desilu, the Paramount's. Sure. And we would just go across the street to lunch a lot. And he, you know, he'd, you know, drink a few things. He'd have a few drinks and he'd come back holding my arm and he'd go straight to work as if he hadn't had anything to drink at all. And he was wonderful. I loved him. And um, Fred McMurray was very nice. But you know what he did? He did his scenes all in one day for, uh, you know, like a, a month's work. I mean, pretty much. And you could be talking to a broomstick or the uh, the you know, script girl and, um, that took a lot of interest to, um, I don't know, it was interesting to do when you're talking to a broomstick when his camera was over the shoulder shot and it's supposed to be uh, Fred McMurray, but it, it, Mr. Douglas, but no, it's it's a broomstick or it's somebody else giving you the cues. And uh, 
he he was very nice, and uh, I got to be friends with uh, Chip, the uh, uh, Stan Livingston, quite well. We're still good pals right now. Really, I I talked wow, to him a lot. Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. That, that's great. He, uh, now, before he, you did that, you wound up on uh, Seventy Seven Sunset Strip. What year was that? Oh God! Well, it all had to be uh, nineteen sixty. Right. I did Sunset Strip. I did uh, Hawaiian Eye. I did. Oh, what else? Uh, Dobie Gillis. Uh, I can't think of. Them. I had the honor to. One of my favorite actresses was Natalie Wood, and um, a modern actress, I should say. And I got to wear her down her dress at Warner Brothers. Uh, my then uh, husband worked at Warner's as a like a second unit or assistant director. He wasn't an actor, right. and I had, went to the wardrobe and, and she, this, the wardrobe lady. You know this Natalie Wood wore this in some show and I went oh my god so I wore that in some show that I did when I was at Warner Brothers so I did a lot of things at Warner Brothers then were you on the contract with Warner Brothers pardon were you on the contract with Warner Brothers no I was under contract to 20th Century Fox when I did when I did Margie so I'm so that's what I did before um, um, Margie and then when I was doing My Three Sons I was fortunate enough to uh, audition for Margie. And it was based on a Gene Crane movie called Margie. It took place in the 1920s and a girl in high school and uh, all the things that happened with her family and the friends and the music. I love the music of the 20s and the, and the outfits. And uh, I had to audition on it. I was told that 200 girls auditioned for that. And um, then when I got it, I um, then they put me under contract. That was towards the end of the contract players, but at least I got to, you know, at least be in on that. And um, so we did Margie, um, I think it was 26, 28 episodes on ABC. Right. Funny, and then we went the second year, I was reruns. We were before The Untouchables and and, uh, and after My Three Sons. We were, isn't that funny, it was My Three Sons. I was right in the middle and uh, I loved it. I loved it because I love the music and of course, I I would have paid them to do it, but I didn't tell them that. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't, right? First class, in right. New York, and, which I was at Toy Fair because I had I had dolls and I had um, paper dolls. I have a game called Margie, and I have um, different um, right. merchandise. But you know, in those days, they call it um, creative business because I don't think anyone in my position in those days got anything for it. I never got a penny for any of that, but I did go to the toy fair and um, I loved it. And then that's when I got a chance to do uh, American Bandstand. Right. Put, put up the next picture. We have a picture of that. Yes, we do. We have a picture of you and Dick Clark. Anthony, put up a picture of them. There we go. So what year was, this was 1962? Uh, 61? What was it? Was, it? Yeah, it was 62. I was doing, uh, uh, I was promoting Margie. Yeah, and I did a record on uh, an, uh, kind of an original label, and I and with the 20th Century Fox Orchestra, which was with uh, Lionel Newman, which was like wow. And uh, I think anyone who could carry a tune in those days, but you made a record, you know, if you're teeny bopper. And uh, I, I got to because my dad was a singer basically, but that's what he did. He was a singer, so I don't have his pipes, so to speak, but yeah. I could, could carry a tune and. Uh, I um, I did that, and then went to a couple of, of fairs, you know, to yeah. promote it, and then was invited to American Bandstand, and I was thrilled because I in high school, Gene, I used to run home from school and watch American Bandstand, and and think and to think, well, my goodness, now I'm on Bandstand, right? And uh, and uh, so I did one of my songs, the original that song. song, a first time love. Yeah, one of those. I don't know a, a baby blue. I don't know which one I did. I don't remember, but it was one of those. Uh huh. And did you lip sync it like everybody else? Yes, yes. Wow. wow. You, what you do? But what you do? You sing it, but you lip sync it. Right, right. That's now what you, it, what you, does. I mean, you know, that's what you do. So right, you, you could be, you could still sing, but that's not what they're hearing. Right now, going back to Margie, you were playing yeah. a girl. How old? Uh, sixteen. And you were twenty-one. Twenty. Well, I had my twenty-first birthday doing Margie, so I was twenty. I was, uh, I played 16 high school. That's yeah. Awesome. And I played high school with my three sons and what they did to get rid of me and my three sons, when I got Margie, they sent me away to college 
and then, then, uh, then uh, about two years later, I came back, and they they wrote a story where I came back to to re- rekindle the relationship with the older, you know, boy of my three sons in right. the show. And uh, but anyway, yeah. So I um I was twenty. I had my twenty first birthday on the set. Actually, I mean the cake and everything. Wow, wow. So you say to be on American Bandstand was a thrill. Uh, oh, what it's kind of, right. What kind of thrill was it? Anthony, put up picture number three. What kind of thrill was it to be on the cover of the TV Guide? A TV Guide. Well, TV Guide in those days were big. You know, that was a something. And I I just remember certain things you don't remember. And, of course, I remember taking that picture and uh, with that black dress and the yeah. braids and uh, 60, you know, the transformation of 62 and, six, and, and 26. Is that what that's supposed to be? And... Uh, it was it was fabulous, just fabulous, and um, I mean I'm uh, and it sold it sold a lot from what I hear, and not right. because of me, but it was a new year, and I think it sold more than it did at the time. Well, the I, I have a comment here that says oh. you you probably attributed to the sales because you were stunning on the cover. So Who did that my dad, uh, one of our one of our one of our viewers. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. So now, you, um, you said that you did the merchandise. Uh, Anthony, put up picture number five, because I want, I want our viewers to see this. This is a Cynthia Pepper cutout doll book. Right, right. Now, do you have all of these, Cynthia? I've had them in, in some time. Uh, I still have a couple of games. Oh, uh, and sometimes I'll take them to a fair and I will tell them if someone wants it. Um, but I, I have two here, but they're not in good condition. So I have that and I had paper dolls. That's what you have showing. Right. I had a coloring book. Uh, and I had a, like a tote bag, a little tote thing that I still have. But, uh, I've moved, you know, so many times since then that I, you know, I've lost track of a lot of it. Right. And, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, but I never, uh, got a penny for it but i've talked to other people in that in my position and they right. say the same thing right yeah it was it was I a different a time back then you know, but it, was a, it was a different time back then uh people right. didn't get they didn't get the compensation they should have right and you know you don't get any any residuals from before 63 right oh so i i um and I wonder, some, I've had people that like Margie, you'd have to actually, well, you can see it on YouTube, you can see clips of it, but uh, who had watched it in those days, we geared it towards young girls, uh, basically, but, you know, anyone can watch it. And um, they uh, uh, they wonder why it isn't, you know, on these TV, you know, shows, where you, they show the nostalgic shows. And I don't think we were ever in, in syndication. We didn't make enough. I think we made 26 episodes and uh we were we were i think in the top 10 as far as ratings go but we were up against from my, the story i heard we were up against hazel and we had procter and gamble for our sponsor and i think someone said they had a choice between hazel and ours and they took hazel that's mm. you know a lot of politics in it i don't know what happened but we we were we had good ratings nowadays you know that you get a shot of one night and if you don't make it you're off so we did, I think, 26 episodes. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, wow. Now so I'm, jump, I'm let, jumping. Ahead. Yeah. I'm jumping ahead at the gun because I, I wanna, I want people to know what you've done other than uh, your most uh, widely known role, especially on this podcast. But you also, Anthony, put up the next picture, uh, picture number four, Anthony. Uh, you were also on uh, the Adams Family. Adams Family, yes. Yeah. Tell us about that. Story of, what? Tell us about that. Well, the strange story about that is that uh, I want to get back to say something about my book real fast. He tells Presley and Pepper, but in the book, the thread of Elvis. I know we're getting to Elvis. Is um, is in the book just by just by chance? You know, the thread of Elvis in my life. Well, right. I did Adam's family. The guy who put Peter Brooks, who played my husband did two or three Elvis films. And of course, Carolyn Jones did, you know, King Creole. King Creole, yes. 
And here I was, and so the three of us, we never talked about Elvis. Isn't that funny? But I love that. I thought they were the nicest people. John Aston and, and Carolyn Jones, they were so sweet. And uh, I played, we played, new, you can get it on YouTube too. We, new Neighbors, I think they're called the New Neighbors. We're in the first uh, season, I think. And, you know, they I pulled to go over to dinner with my husband. Of course, I don't want to go because they're all creepy over there and so forth. <laughs> It's the end, you know, with, with, what do you want? We're going to have a uh, tongue of soup and I to, newt of I and I don't know, just crazy stuff. And, you know, and uh, it was fun to do. It was a lot of fun to do. And uh, I did you know, Flying Nun and Wagon Train and Lassie and just different stuff like um, that. I just, uh, it was a wonderful time. Right. Now, let's, go let's, ahead, let's, let's, let's mention your book. Uh, right away, we'll do it again later. Okay. You you did a book called Pigtails, Presley, and Pepper, and it's right. available yes. on Amazon, Amazon.com for all our viewers that want to read up. How long did that take you to uh, write, Cynthia? I did it. I co-wrote with a friend of mine, a Canadian friend, lives above Toronto. We became good friends the last ten years, and I've had people when I do I do a lot of this. I did, you know, till we start, you know, traveling again. Uh, festivals, Elvis especially, and the nostalgic shows, but Elvis, and they'll say, we, we talk about their life and my life. They say, well, you should write a book. And I thought, well, you know, I would need some help with that and stuff. So I uh, talked to my friend Victor Hansen, and uh, we decided we were going to write a book. And uh, I said, I want to write, I, I don't want to be an Elvis book per se, because so many people have written about that. Right. And we all have our, our per, uh, perception of Elvis. And I, you know, and a lot of critical acclaim and people criticize it. And, you know, as far as people writing books about Elvis. So I'm going to write a show business book. So we started kind of, he would, we'd do it on the phone. We did it on the, on the computer, you know, email. And then a couple of times he and his wife came down and stayed with us and did it like that. It took us two years, but we, we self-published. So we could take, we had no deadline. So I wanted to go from the beginning and I did start with the New York you know, going, working on the, you know, on Broadway with Julie Harris. And, 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 and we kind of, I said, I want to go in order because then I can remember things. And okay. Victor is real good with, with the, the technical part as far as the business part of dates and so forth. And I had the story. So I would write something and then he would write and then I would write and that's how we did it. And uh, I'm real happy about it. It's, it's, a, it's not a tell all, kiss and tell, but it has enough interest for people. You know, I oh, wanted to make it sound like I'm talking to one person and people have told me that's how they felt. Right. Well, that's a one on one experience that everybody would love. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, everybody out there, Amazon dot com. Look for pigtails, Presley and Pepper. As we ask, uh, we give you the show for free here. But if any of our guests are selling any type of memorabilia, we'd love for you to go and purchase it. Uh, just to show them that we uh, we get we get the word out. Uh, Thank you, so, Cynthia. When I started uh, promoting this show, I want you to hear what I wrote because uh, this okay. is going to segue into the Elvis part. Okay. Join Gene as he interviews Elvis's co-star for the movie Kissing Cousins, Cynthia Pepper, who not only had her screen time with Elvis but also had a wonderful career on her own. She is the only co-star of Elvis to flip him instead of him flipping her. Do you know that? You are the only female that flipped Elvis Presley. And a blonde. And a blonde. Blonde Elvis. So tell us. Um, How that happened? Tell us. Uh, yeah, number nine, Anthony. Picture number nine. Put it up. So what we're looking at right now is the lobby card uh, with you standing over the blonde Elvis in front right. of the Jeep. So with the Jeep, right? Yeah. So did you actually use your own body weight to flip him? Well, here there's a couple of stories. First of all, I, I did I had to drive the Jeep. We we shot that up in Big Bear, California, which was supposed to be the Smoky Mountain. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we uh, I I could do a stick shift. But I had to drive the, the Jeep, if you see the movie, towards Elvis. And I thought, oh, my God, you know, I'm, what if I run over Elvis and the brakes don't work or something? I'm scared to death. But it worked out okay. So in rehearsal, 
we, you know, he did all the karate stuff. He showed me how to, how to flip him. And of course he gave, right, his weight and it helped me because I, I was five, one and a half and he was almost six foot. And I could, you know, it, since he knew what I was doing, he had to give his body so it, you know, would help me. But this one time, let me tell you, we, we were rehearsing and I've told this story to other people when I've been on stage and stuff and they, they, they find it interesting. It is, it's really, uh, it's hysterical how uh, you were the f- co-star of a movie where Elvis played himself twice. Exactly. Uh, you know, and he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything. And I thought, oh my God, he just, he was just lying there. And finally, about two minutes later, he says, I got you, my little speckled pup. He just wanted to get me stirred up, and he sure did, because I thought he hit his head and I killed Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go into witness protection for sure. <laughs> So he, we just, uh, I, 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 he loved to play practical jokes, and but he didn't like it on him. But I, I told this one too. But I, I think this is a kind of a neat story. Um, when I was fifteen, my dad knew all the people on the Giant film, you know, Taylor, uh, James Dean, Rock right. Lesnar, and Warner Brothers. So I, we were living in Hollywood. It was my fifteenth birthday, and I get on the. He goes over there, my the daddy, and he calls me. This has to do, I'm tying it in with Elvis, how to get back at him for doing that to me. So the phone rings, and I answer the phone, and this man says, Cynthia, and I said, yes. He said, this is James Dean. He said, I, I heard it was your birthday. I never forgot this. And I said, yes. He said, well, how old are you? And I said, 15. He said, oh, well, happy birthday. Just wanted to say that. Here's your, here's your daddy. And he brought the phone back to my dad. And then two weeks later, James Dean was gone, you know, from his accident. Right. So I, I knew that uh, Elvis loved James Dean and loved his acting and wanted to emulate him, you know, as the acting uh, part. So I said, how am I going to get back at Elvis without being mean or anything? So because he, he let me stew with that, you know, hitting his head. <laughs> I just, I, well, one of the conversations we had, and I, we had many conversations, and I said, Elvis, I said, well, I did something you didn't do. And he goes, what is that? And I said, well, you really want to know? He said, yeah, I want to know. So I told him, he said, you actually talked to James Dean? I said, well, it was a short conversation. <clears throat> I might have embellished on him how long mm. it was, but it was very, it was very short. And he goes, what did he sound like? He was like a kid. I said, well, he sounded like this. I said, so, so what do you have to say about that? You didn't get to do that. And he goes, oh, okay, you got me. I mean, it wasn't anything big or deal, but I thought, how am I going to get back at him? Because he loved to play jokes on people. And I thought, well, I'm going to, it wasn't really a joke, but it was something that I got him riled up a bit. And he, he gave me a big hug. And um, when he called me a speckled pup in rehearsal, they put it into the film. So he does say speckled pup into the film, and that's where that came from. So, uh, yeah, he was a, he was a wonderful man and, and so easy to work with, Elvis. You know, uh, you got into the the movie with Elvis when the formula movies were starting to appear uh, with the same plot, uh, silly songs. Do you feel that Elvis could have been a good dramatic actor? From yes. What you saw? Yeah, he could have, as they say, he could have been a contender, you know, like Brando says from Wild on the Waterfront. Right. Yeah, he, we all know, he, because he had some good ones in the beginning. Uh, I mean, I'm glad he did it because they were they're clean. And uh, people enjoy them even now, and you, you can kids can see them. And uh, well, I'm certainly glad that he did that film because uh, I would be talking to you right right now <laughs> about Elvis. So uh, he he was a better actor, but it was such a, like you said a formula. I mean, he gets the girl, he loses the girl, he gets the girl, and that's and he sings, you know, and that's almost about it. Um, and when I knew him, he didn't. I didn't see any. Uh, resentment of doing these films. I know people who said he hated them. I never saw that. Now, we did it in 1963, and it was released in 64. So he was, you know, it was fresh. It wasn't like towards the end of his movie career. And I didn't see that. We had a good time. He was a professional. He was such a professional. He knew our lines, my line, his line, and everyone else's lines. And I never saw that. We always had a good time. And um, But he could have. And I'm thinking... You know, people say, what do you think of Colonel Parker? And I said, well, I really don't have that, you know, much opinion. I said, in the beginning, I mean, if it weren't for him, maybe he wouldn't have had the career he had. But I think, and people know that he 
maybe could have let him loose a bit, you know, to do other things. And I don't know, you know, the, the stories or anything, the, you know, the uh, inside of that. But um, he could have done a lot. Right. In the film. You know, we, we don't do the show to disparage anybody. Everybody has their own opinions. Right. But, you know, I, somebody... I have nothing bad to say about anybody. Right. The, so. uh, somebody made a remark uh, to me about a, a week ago, and they said, um, can you imagine how big he would be if he did A Star Is Born or if he recorded this? And I said, Elvis Presley is the biggest star in the universe. How much bigger right. do you get? You're right. How big do they want him? Yeah. Listen, it happens. Everything happens for he. He was meant. His life was. I'm a believer in. He, it, it guided from above, and his life is what it was. He died at 42. We're still talking about him. I see. I hear his name every day, watching TV or on the radio. It has nothing to do with movies. It just someone mentions his name or music, and he. How, what, what bigger story would they want? I mean. You know, he had it all. And uh, he said to me one time when, when he sings his love song to me up in the, we shot it in Big Bear. And, and he said to me, we was profound. And I've said this before to people. I said, he said, said yeah. and I said, yes, Elvis. He said, I don't know what I'm doing here. And I said, what do you mean, Elvis? He said, well, making all these films. I, I feel I should be back home driving a truck. Hmm. And I'm thinking, wow, that, what do you say to that? You know, it was profound. I don't know what I said at the time but i was shocked how he said that and he was quite a humble man and uh, insecure but it happened the way it's supposed to have happened right you know uh, his career right did you ever get to hang out with him after the shoot was over i i didn't but we kept in touch you did that was, you know when you had regular phones and i lived in la and as you know then and uh he would, you know, he travel and we talk on the phone. And then when he th went to Vegas, he said, honey, come up and see me. And I said, well, I will, I'll, you know, I'll try. And I, you know, put it off because Elvis is going to be there forever, right? I mean, he's a young man. And I never did. And wow. I, I never saw him in concert. And uh, I, they say you regret what you didn't do in life more than what you did. And I feel that's true in, in that case. Um Obviously, I wish I had taken him up on it, right. but we kept in touch and we had a, a very nice relation relationship. So um, um, we hung around, you know, during the show, the, the shoot, you know, with the guys and everything. Right. But uh, he he was out, you know, out and about, right. and I went along my way and did my shows and stuff. Right. So speaking of uh, the song, uh, the song for those of you that don't know. Uh, if you're living under a rock, the song that Elvis sang to Cynthia was called Tender Feeling. And I got to ask Cynthia, uh, how many Elvis tribute artists have sang that to you? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll tell you something funny. I have, year, quite a few years ago, this, this fan club in Florida was very sweet, made me an outfit because I played a whack, you know, uniform. Yeah. And, and made me a whack that was a replica of, of the outfit. So I've had, so I've done that. I've surprised the whole audience. I've, you know, been all over, thank God, because of Elvis and working with him. And I've been all over, out of the world, out of, you know, in Europe and everywhere. And I'll go back I'll, backstage and I'll surprise everybody and I'll come out in the uniform. Of course, someone said, is that the same uniform? I said, honey, I couldn't get my right leg in the <laughs> uniform now. I mean, I'm not heavy, but, you know, I was of size zero or two. And anyway, so... I come out and I've had more, and it's usually, it is tender feelings. And sometimes it's kissing cousins. I got a gal, da, da, da. Right. Sometimes it'll be that. And I can move. I like to move around and kind of, you know, and uh, they've been wonderful, you know, because there's not many of us left. And, you know, it's Elvis co-stars and, um, or anyone who knew Elvis, basically. Right. So they get a big kick out of that. I do too. And they've always been gracious and respectful. Right. And yeah, I've had a lot of sing to me that. Yeah. And you know what, Gene, it takes me back a little bit. You know, I get choked up because I try to go back to those memories, you know, of Elvis singing to me. And as a teenager, I thought, oh, my God, you know, oh, Elvis, I had a big crush on him. And to think that, you know, he actually sang to me and, and I was getting paid for it, too, Gene. <laughs> but that he sang to me. And uh, so I, I really appreciate the guys that do that. Right. We have one one of our watches right now, Shane Devine from Ireland, saying that to you. Could you give him a hello? Can you say hi, Shane? 
Hi, Shane. <laughs> I remember being there. What a wonderful time I had there. Well, I'm, I'm Irish. I got my, my great grandfather came from County Cork. Yes. Wow. Wow. We also have watching us uh, the mother of one of the uh, one of the finest Elvises, Donnie Edwards' mom, is on the show watching us. Uh, Deanne, do you know Deanne? Diane. Diane, she's I watching. I know Diane. Show. Sure. Diane. Yeah, she's watching. Hi, yeah, she's watching. Thanks, Diane. Good to see you. Please say hello to your son and everybody else. Uh, so Elvis Presley I sings. To Donnie you. and Donna a lot. Oh, they're great. They're great people. Wonderful yeah, people. Yeah, they're in Vegas. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I got to ask this because it's it, all the females want to know. It's weird how I'm going to say it, but how good of a kisser was Elvis? <laughs> oh, he was a wonderful kisser. I must say my <laughs> husband now is a great kisser, and that's for real. But Elvis was a wonderful kisser, and he spelled like brute. You know, the brute cologne, which yeah. makes it even better because I liked it then. And I, I tell people, I said, you know, uh, doing it on the ground because I had to kiss him on the ground. I said, I, I would pretend, you know, I would kind of do it. I liked it so much that I would mess it up. You know, I'd say, you know, Gene Nelson directed it, who I had a crush on as a kid too. I said, can we, can we do that again? And cause the light was, you know, not shining right. My key light and all that stuff. And so we did it as many times as we could. I did. And, and Elvis said, that's right, honey. We'll just keep doing it. So he was, he was a wonderful kisser. Mm. He was a, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. Let, let me ask you a question about the wig that he wore. Did the blonde wig ever fall off when he was filming? <laughs> no. No? No, but he, he hated it. No, he didn't like it. It took him, it took him a while for him to come out of the dressing room. He didn't like it. But, but you know, he had to do that because of the playing the twin. You know, right. cousin. Right. Right, right. Um, I know... You know, the last time that I saw you, Cynthia, I don't know if you remember, we did an Elvis festival in Barstow, California. Oh, yes. And and nobody showed up because it was in the middle of a sandstorm. I remember that. You remember that? It was I like me that. and you. I and that, yes. It was like seven people in, in the audience and we, we almost died. But you have a uh, a nickname, which I don't know if you know, you're called the Approachable Starlet. Because you are... That. Yeah, you are so approachable, and you make oh. everybody feel a wonderful. And I want to put up, Anthony, put up picture number 12. Uh, this is probably the third or fourth time I met you, and there are two pictures of me and you. And I swear, Cynthia, you are hugging me like we are long-lost friends. Well, we you, are long-lost friends, Dean. <laughs> We, well, we are, but back then, Aww, we were, we were newbies, and it's a beautiful picture, and I treasure it. Uh, yeah. But when I met you, I met you with Deborah Wally and, uh-huh. Julie, and Julie Parrish. Right, and they're I both met, gone, honey. Yeah, I know. God bless their souls. And, you know, I wish I started doing this show years ago because there's so many people uh, I wish I would have interviewed. But... Uh, when you used to get together with Deborah and Julie, did you swap stories and and did you try to one up each other on the Elvis connection, or, or was it a camaraderie? Of, it was of- camaraderie. Now, I at that time I I still lived in well, I actually lived in Portland, Oregon for a while, but then I came to Vegas and I would see Julie. I was closer to Julie because I knew her more. She was in California. And uh, Deborah was in New Mexico, I believe. And Annie Helm, I, I'm still friends with. Oh, wonderful. From Florida, I agree. And Yvonne Craig was a dear, dear friend of mine. Dear friend of mine. She's in my book. And, now, uh, for those, for our viewers that don't know who Yvonne Craig was, uh, she was she was um, in Kissing Cousins as well. And it happened at the World's Fair. It happened at the World's Fair. And she was bad girl. She was bad girl. She was bad girl, but she, I've known her, I've known her, um, actually, funny thing about it, that she was, been Margie, she had like a couple of lines in Margie, at, not as an extra, but she was, you know, had a couple of lines, and I thought, well, I didn't know her then, you know, and then we became friends, and we actually went over around Europe when we did a, a, a play, I mean, a TV pilot called Three Coins in the Fountain, with, yeah. uh, um, oh, God, jeez, I can't think of it. 
Yvonne Craig and uh, one to, to, Tatum's mother, um, Tatum O'Neill's mother. I can't think of her name. Mm. She was very to um, on my mind. Anyway, all three of us were great with Elvis, and uh, so Yvonne and I went to Europe after that. We were already in Rome for six weeks, but we we traveled around Europe uh, after that. So I got to know Yvonne really well, and we were very good friends. And uh, I miss, but I do miss Julie and uh, and um, Deborah very much. They were uh, lovely, very yeah, lovely ladies. Quite a few of us, you know. Yeah. Uh, one of the pictures I have, it's in a frame, is a uh, me, you, Julie. Deborah and Marion Cock. Oh, and Marion and I are great friends. Yeah, a lovely lady. I'm going to get her out every time I go to Memphis. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get in touch with her to do the show, uh, but I don't have a phone no, I number. Anymore. Yeah, I talked to her. Uh, I think I talked to her two days ago. We're like family. I go uh, every year, and uh, I didn't go this year um, or, or last year. I'm not going this year. I'm going last year, obviously. I didn't travel. Right. But uh, she's 94. And uh, smart as a wit, but she's not feeling quite well. And I don't know if she'd be up to it uh, right now. But uh, we're, we're uh, like there's an aunt to me. We're family. And yeah. uh, I've known her now for, oh gosh, almost 20 years. Yeah, she will bounce back because she's, she's a, she's see, a and, tough the Elvis people, Elvis people, fans are the best. I tell people that. And we're like a family. The whole world of Elvis is like a family. Sometimes dysfunctional. <laughs> but as a family, nevertheless, we you know we we uh, defend each other and we love each other, and uh, it's a wonderful thing, and it's all because of Elvis. That's what he gave to the world. That that he did, he gave it, and he still gives. Uh, right. And he doesn't even know he gives. Um, now yeah. I found a picture of you and one of my most favorite performers, uh, Anthony. Put up picture number ten, which is you and Carol Burnett. Oh, Carol Burnett. Yeah. Carol Burnett. Oh, well, Carol, I didn't go to school. She went to LeConte High School of Junior, where I went in Hollywood, and Hollywood High. And this was, she was doing a show here in Vegas in our new uh, center, performing center. And uh, she, not too long ago, actually, a few years ago. And a friend of mine went backstage. And the reason I got to talk to her is because of going to high school with her. And she always talks about Hollywood High. And being in the business. So I have a wonderful picture. And Debbie Reynolds, Debbie, I knew Debbie because of my daddy. Right. Car, Harry Carl. And that's another. He's, that she, I've got a cute story I won't tell you now because I won't have the time. But on the back of my book, there's a part uh, headline called, uh, I think it's um, Steve's Steve's chapter. And it has to do with a funny story that Debbie did when we were on the phone with each other. And Oh, I, you know, I don't mean to be name dropping, but it's because of my daddy, that's the only reason I, you know, could say that about Debbie. But yeah, very fortunate the people I've met, honey. And I've had, I tell people I got the right career, you know, um, at that time. Well, you know, you could say uh, it was because of your daddy, but nobody lasts as long as you did in this business and has the amount of friends unless they uh -huh. were somebody special as well. So don't don't sell yourself short there, Miss Pepper. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gene. I appreciate that. Got, now we got a, we got another picture here, Anthony Number Eleven. You wrote a poetry book. In a what? Short, you wrote a poetry book. A, po a poetry book? Yeah. You wrote I don't a book. Know. What is it? Stories that dance. You remember that? I wish I could see it now. Uh, what, what, what's, what's happening in it? Well, it's it's just a book. It says poetry and paintings by Cynthia Pepper. No, I didn't do that. You didn't do that? Poetry and paintings by me? No. Do you paint? It's not me. Isn't that but weird? Do you, do you paint? Is that me? No, it's a cartoon drawing. So it's not oh, you. I don't Actually, wow. I'm, in a, I'm in a, I'm in a, um, a what is it, a, a Finnish, you know, like country Finland. Right. And their coloring book. Is that what you mean? Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, I did that. But I didn't do it. I, I sent them a picture. And it's a, it's their coloring book. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Now I know. And it's, it's when I, it's, it's when I'm standing over Elvis, right? Yeah. 
Yes, that's the okay, picture. Yeah, that was done. And uh, I feel they did that. I think it's a marvelous book, actually. And it's from Finland. And someone got me, uh, sent me the information. When Would I be willing to, you know, have them use a picture or send them a picture that, and put them in the book and say a few things? I would... I talked to him and he sounded, you know, legit and everything. It was great. And so, yes, I am in a coloring book. I didn't know what you meant. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, isn't that you, something? I was so happy with that. Right. You also, you continued working into the 70s. You you did a, a show with Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, I did. Uh, well, I did a movie, Take Her, She's Mine. The yeah. movie with the Sandra D. I played her roommate and Audrey Meadows and, um, and then uh, Julia with, Diane Carroll, I played her her son's teacher twice, and just different things. I can't think of everything right now. But then um, I did, um, uh, about 10 years ago, well, 2005, I did Miss Congeniality with uh, Sandra Bullock. Yep. But I must tell you, I only have two lines, but I do get credit at the end, so I'm really happy with that. They oh. filmed it here in Vegas at the Venetian. Right. It's two lines more than a lot of other people have. Right. <laughs> it's two lines more than a lot of other people have. Put it that way. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was really happy with that. Um, uh, she was very sweet. I didn't know her. You know, of course, I knew. I didn't know. I knew of her, but I didn't know her. And she was very, very sweet and very kind. It took it took like five hours to do it. And since I live here, I had to actually read for that. And uh, two lines. And if you blink, I'm gone. But at least you know, I'm on it. And I <laughs> went to the theater by myself to see it. And sure enough, I'm. I'm tourist woman, you know, I'm, I'm on the credit and I, I tell people, you know, I'm in a Julie, I am in it, but I don't want to embellish, you know, any more than what it is. But right. I, that's the last time I've done that. Now I, I'm really happy. About, I've done a few commercials here and there, but now I'm happy when we can start traveling again, because I love to travel and talk right. to fans. Like right. I said, the best. You do the Elvis conventions all over the world. Right. And you yeah. Do, Australia, you. Denmark, right. Germany. Let me ask you, you have, a, you, have a, you have a son, Cynthia, Michael, right? Yes, I do. Right. Let me ask you something. Uh, when Michael was growing up, did he know uh, what that his mom was a performer and an actress and worked with Elvis? Did he know a little more than what was let on? Well, he his dad... Like I said, was in the business, but he was in the performer. He was behind the scenes, so he grew up in that business. But I have another cute short story. As an adult, he lived in L.A. I lived here in Vegas, and he was used to hang out at this coffee house in in Studio City in the Valley in L.A. and um, near Warner, actually near Universal Studios. Anyway, so he called me one time because he always was kind of he was never really curious about what I did. I mean, he knew what I did, but he wasn't. You know, it's when you live with your mom. I'm just mom, right? And right. Uh, He's one is my only child. And so he he calls me one time and this is another thing I tell people, it's funny. And I said, Hi Michael, he says, Hi mom, he said, I want to ask you something. He said, First of all, I'm sitting here with the guys in the coffee house. We're just having coffee or tea. I said, Okay, like friends, you know, doing the in the T V show. I said, Okay. He said, Well, I'm gonna ask you what and I said, What? He said Well, the guys were looking at me and they knew that you worked with Elvis and they're they're wondering, you know, I have blue eyes and I went uh oh, I knew where he was going. <laughs> I knew where he was going and I said now he's never talked about this. Now he's a grown man, right? It's it happened, I don't know, maybe ten years ago or something like that. And I said, Yes and he goes, Well, he said, So tell me, they thought maybe uh that I'm his son and, and I was shocked and I said he said, So I wanna ask you two questions and I went, Uh oh God, you <laughs> know what? He said, First of all, he said, Did you have a thing with Elvis? And I said uh, and, and, and am I his son? And I said, well, the first question I won't answer. The second one, no, you're not. Now, here comes the, the topper. And I said, no, you're not. He goes, oh, no, Mom. He says, I wish, oh, that would have been great. That would have been wonderful. And besides, Dad wouldn't mind. Oh, my God. I think did Dad would have mind. Did he really I say that? Dad would have mind. And I, he... And, and he just got married a few years ago. He was late getting married, and he, they live in the Berkshires, Massachusetts. And uh, he works for a lady as a personal assistant who's on TV. Anyway, so he 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 has told his his wife about this, and then he said, and at one time she says, "Bless her heart," she says, "Are you? Is he?" I said, "No, he's not. 
<laughs> he, he has a full mouth. He has these blue eyes. He doesn't really look like me that much. And I, it was so funny. And I thought, well, you know, I could have played along with him. But I said, no, honey. He goes, oh, darn it. You know, it's like he was disappointed. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I, 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 mean, I, I just shocked. Cause you asked me if he really knew. He didn't really care. You know, he was doing his own thing, you know. Right. Right, right. He's a good man. He's a good man. Well, we wish him well. And uh, Thank you. I got to tell you, Cynthia, this has been one of the most entertaining shows we've done. Uh, oh. I am sorry that I can't get you on camera. Uh, because it would be like nice. I didn't get the know-how, and I will. Yeah. We'll do this again. But for all our viewers and listeners, because we go out on a couple of audio platforms as well, Check out Amazon.com for the wonderful book called Pigtails, Presley, and Pepper, written by our dear friend and guest for tonight, Cynthia Pepper. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we do with all our guests, let's give Miss Cynthia Pepper a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you guys so much, honey. Thank thank you. you. God bless you you guys. Thank you so very much. Uh, We're going to stay in touch. And uh, enjoy the rest of your night out there in Las Vegas. Thank you, honey. Thanks so much. I gave my love to your wife. All of Will you. do. Stay well. God bless you. All right, honey. God Bye. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What a wonderful show, huh, people? You know, I'm so happy that everybody I've called uh, has agreed to do this. And I hope you get a little more insight, a little bit on Elvis and a little bit on them as well. So check out the book, Pigtails, Presley, and Pepper on Amazon.com. We want to tell you about next week's guest. Now, next week's guest was supposed to be Elvis Presley's tour manager, Charles Stone. But we had a scheduling conflict, and we're going to have to bring him on at a later date. So I reached out to a young lady who attended and escorted Elvis to his 1975 tour, especially when he was here in Long Island. So next week's guest is not only one of Elvis Presley's former girlfriends, but she's a beautiful hee-haw honey. For those of you that remember the show, hee-haw, she was a hee-haw honey. Anthony, put the picture up of Diana Goodman, ladies and gentlemen. She will be our guest next week. And I picked this picture Because she is probably one of the few people that was allowed to mess up Elvis Presley's hair. You could see her fingers right at the edge of his sideburns. And uh, she's a stunning woman. She's still stunning. And we are going to have such a great time with her. She's an author. She's a hee-haw honey. She's an Elvis uh, person. So we are going to have a great time with them with her next week. So check it out. Anthony, my producer, thank you so much. Once again, San Martino Restaurant, our sponsor for the night, 12 Young Avenue, www.sanmartinos.com for their website. Outgoing orders, 914-779-5300. Once again, Visions. Let's go live, Anthony. Visions Cookbook. To raise money for a wonderful organization, visionsvcb.org. This is available as a book, a PDF for seeing sighted people and for Braille. So please, and if you want to make a donation under my name, that would be wonderful. I want to thank everybody once again. The comments are wonderful. Please share this video. Go to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to Gene DiNapoli. Follow the page Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli. And as we do every week, we wish you to stay well, stay safe, stay positive. God bless you and God bless America. Good night, everybody.